Hey, moron! Hey, moron! Duh! Look at me! I'm the water boy, duh! Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. Um, it's hump day, which means it's the middle of the week, which means it is uh, the Dan Celia show. This is going to be one of those days that I dread because it's hump day and they're probably going to be humping me. Um, and deservedly so. Um, I hate what the Dallas Cowboys... No, no, no. Hold on, let me stop. Let me rephrase this. I hate what Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones have done to me and this fan base. This is ridiculous. The more that you really dig underneath the surface and you listen to things that have happened with the Cowboys, the more you realize how screwed up they are, how out of touch with football, how they don't know what they're doing. Let's be clear here. We have been rebuilding and trying to get back to the Super Bowl for 30 years. And it has been an utter, uh, utter disaster, failure, whatever you want to call it. It just sucks. We stink. We are the worst out there. And I don't know how else to put it. Every day we, we go back. I, I, you know, it was like yesterday I, I had a flashback of Jerry Jones on, on the bus, you know, talking to reporters about a plan as he's just sitting here doodling. Just doodling. You know, the same guy that literally said all in and then trying to uh, backtrack or clean it up or basically say, no, that's not what I really meant. That he literally is just selling you some bullshit. He is a modern day snake oil salesman. And when you start hearing some of the stuff, I don't know if it's intentional or if Jerry Jones, who is 82 years old, just doesn't have it the same way that he did in the past. Because the old Jerry Jones, who keeps talking about the risks he took buying the Cowboys and, you know, trading for, you know, uh, getting Deion Sanders and uh, Charles Haley's and trading um, Herschel Walker's, that guy does not exist anymore. Not anywhere close to it. As he opines to telling us how good he is he is because of what he did in his past. As Janet Jackson says, what have you done for me lately? And the thing that I have learned being here on YouTube, and I have said it over and over and over again, is you must evolve. You must change. Because people figure out what you do to be successful, they find a way to do it better and cheaper, and they pass you by. That's what happened to Tom Landry. Tom Landry was an innovator. Came up with the flex defense. Found players like Bob Bullet Hayes that were in other sports. Used the shotgun and the shift. Then, you had San Francisco come through. West Coast offense. They changed, evolved. You had Joe Gibbs come up with the H-back and the one-back offense. And the Cowboys, they were stuck doing the same thing. And they got old. And they got passed by. Until we changed with Jimmy Johnson. So... This is where we are with the Cowboys. We are still lining up, basically figuring man on man, we can just beat people one on one. And here's where it gets to be crazy because uh, I'm going to play this clip early because 
hearing this and the reaction is even worse when you think about some of the things Jerry says. And it might sound like an odd statement, but if you look at how Kirk Cousins has played lately, the Falcons are a team that's on the upswing. Yep. Whereas we're looking at the Cowboys, Jerry has faith in them. They think they'll figure it out, and yet what they're putting out on the field does not give you that confidence. It, it's Dak versus Cousins in, in the battle of the enormous contracts, right? I mean, there's, <laughs> we were having that conversation yesterday. Jerry Jones did his usual Tuesday radio interview, and he offered what can only be described as an interesting explanation of the way he goes about paying players. I've always looked at the dollars we spend in football and on the uh, roster. I've always looked at them as scholarships. And uh, you as give scholarships. One, one player five scholarships. If it were college vernacular, you give another player one scholarship. The more guys you can have out there with one scholarship, uh, the, the better off you are because of attrition. Okay. I, I, I have that same look as, as Kmart. Okay. You can't give a guy five scholarships. You can give a guy one scholarship. You can give a guy a half scholarship. You can give a guy a quarter scholarship. Okay? But you can't give one guy five scholarships. It doesn't work that way. Literally, Jerry Jones is just crazy grandpa now. Crazy grandpa. That's where we are. And I don't even know what to say anymore. This guy is GM who's talking about paying players like college scholarships. You give one guy five scholarships and you give another guy one scholarship. The hell are you talking about? Go on. <laughs> what yeah, is right? We were all a little. We were all a little. We listened to that in the meeting this morning, and, and none of us are quite sure. Like I'm like, something's got to be wrong. Like I'm like, I'm because not, of attrition at the end is what right. that part is like. But, so a lot of guys gonna get hurt. So we right. gotta have a lot of cheap guys. Yeah, you uh, want to can you, cycle through. You want to pay less money to players as opposed to more money to players. It Which seems is literally to be the opposite of what we of see what they do. In the NFL so let's just move past it. I have a question. <laughs> <Fine>. Okay. <laughs> I have a question. Jeff, I'm starting with you. All right. The Dallas Cowboys, we talk about them all the time and sometimes maybe we overstate it. They were good. I mean, there's just yeah. no two ways about it. They were a very good football team as recently as last year. They were here. Yeah. Now, it would be one thing if they went from here to here, yeah. but somehow it feels like they've gone from here to here. How did that happen in one offseason? Two things. They got worse on the offensive line, mm -hmm. and they're not nearly as opportunistic on the defensive side. We're not getting takeaways. Of, the, of, of football. So when you think about how you win games in the NFL, you had, you had an offensive line that could help control. You had explosive plays down the field with Dak and CD. They made plays. And then they did the same on defense. They, they, they get into these track meets because they'd be up 14 points in the first half of games, right? And then you're coasting to wins, finding a way to be able to run the football because teams can't play it. They can't do that now. They're not starting fast. They do, and they have the same offense which they had last year. Teams are getting more accustomed to what they do. And they basically just run Dak and CD out there and go, hey, good luck. Go win a game. Mm -hmm. Not going to work in the NFL. Deron Bland broke the record for pick sixes last yeah, year. He's been yeah. hurt. I know, no, my right. point is how yeah. they went from there to, to right. here is that's because right. of major plays. Like, you got – that's a little bit of luck. And also, like, Micah Parsons was, like, the front runner for defensive player of the year. He was getting so many sacks. Like, you remember the beginning of last year, they were up by, like, 21 points at halftime. Right. It's about all yeah. those games. And now they're in a different situation with no running attack and with uh, a lesser offensive line, no it's going to be hard. Not That's it. I mean, they, they, their offense is not built to carry a team. And their defense isn't great. Their offensive line got worse. Their run game got worse. It makes their West Coast offense, which is already an old version of the West Coast. It's not the Shanahan offense. It's right. the this Texas like the old Toast. School version. It makes it one-dimensional, which makes it predictable, which makes it unimaginative, which makes it stale. Mm. And even in that one dimension, you have one option. CD Lamb. That's right. We know you're going to him. Makes it's it fun easy for to take defense. away. It's exactly. real fun for him. People are pinning their ears back because there's no way you can go. I would say it began when they decided to get rid of Zeke, not bring him back. But then two years later, we're like, you know what? Let's let's run him back here. Let's yeah. bring him back. Everything about all of the moves that they have made, we have said this. None of them make sense when you stack them together. Right. In, in like you know. Uh, 
and, or an order. I'm yeah, and let, let, me, let me say this about their defense as well. I played on a team that was built to rush the passer, right? Dwight Freeney and Robert Mathis, both those guys will end up in the Hall of Fame because of that. But that means your offense – has to be loaded to bear, right? You got to play from have, in front. You yeah. got to you got to have two yep. receivers. You have to have a solid run game. You got to be able to protect the passer because you can't go down in the hole and try to recover. The problem is they're playing it backwards. We talk about complementary football. They do the exact opposite yeah. and leave and expose both sides of the of, of the football to what they do worse. It's it's unbelievable. Here's the thing. Football changes all the time, but there's one thing that will remain a constant. They're as bad as any team in the league at running it, yeah. and they're as bad as any Max. team in the league at stopping the run. And if you have those two things, it doesn't make yeah, any it, difference. It doesn't matter who the board do. Yeah. There, those are foundational principles. It's like in basketball, you got to be tall. It's the same thing in, in football. It's I resent like, that. I'm sorry. Well, you're a football player, not a right. basketball player, me right. either. But in football, you have to be able to run the football and stop the run or protect the pass. Like these are fundamental. Right. Things. Yep. When I Jeff loves to hear when I say this, but when I pick my Super Bowl winners at the beginning of the season, the first thing I look at is the Just offensive line. Like, yep. Is the offensive line going to be good enough? That's a big question. That's the scary thing about the Texans is I don't know that their offensive right. line is. Right. Great point. And so I guess I would finish it with this question. Can they turn this around? We talk about them like they're one and six. They're not. They're three and four. They're theoretically still in the mix. There's still more than half a season to go. Can they turn it around? The issue is not the record. It's when you use the eyeballs That's to watch what I mean. the game. It's yeah. like this is not. This is going the opposite direction as opposed to it, turning it, this thing around. It, it's People hard to disagree with any of this. It's like when we talk about this offense, and it's like it's archaic. We're looking at the offense where it's like it's not even nothing. And they have no other counter punch to CD. And even Dak and CD aren't on the same page. Can, I mean, I, I can answer your question and continue with my analogy. Can I get tall enough to be a rim protector? <laughs> right, right. Right. No. Right. No, you These can't. These are long-term problems that can't be solved yeah. in the short term. When you use the eye test, you find yourself asking, how did they win three games? <laughs> <laughs> Let's do mid-season. <laughs> if I could get everybody's okay. attention. Okay, so... There we go. <laughs> there we go on that, good people. It is just horrendous. Here's where we are, okay? Here's where we are. We got Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones, and they're in denial. They're not looking like they realize they've made a mistake and that they're going to do anything about it. And And maybe this was all by design that we're going to go ahead and get rid of Mike McCarthy because, you know, we, we can't be a playoff team and hold on to him because we'll look like we're idiots. That we literally have to make sure that he looks like a complete failure. We can get him to take the blame and Dak Prescott to take the blame, and, and we're rebuilding. And that we're going to make this as bad as possible so that way we can get as high as possible draft pick. Um for the next guy. But I don't know who the next guy is going to be that's going to get a different result when we have angry grandpa picking all the players, picking the coaching staff, and meddling and constantly out front. You can say, oh, we'll get Bill Belichick. I don't know that that makes a difference one bit. The reality is, is the Cowboys refuse to look beyond the draft and they're signing their own players. That's a fact. We have no depth. We have a few really good players. We have a few really good players, which is enough to get us some wins, you know, and make us feel good about ourselves. But it's not enough to do what we want them to do, which is win Super Bowls. We just don't. And it doesn't matter who you bring in here as a coach. As long as Jerry J Jones is GM, it doesn't matter. You have some good seasons, and you have some ones that will be like this, like we've been dealing with through the Tony Romo years, 8-8, eight 8-8, 8-8. 12-4, eight, eight, eight and, eight. Mm. and four, playoffs. Four and twelve. The reality is, is Sunday is critical because the Falcons. You lose that one, then it's time to just go ahead and junk everything. Try and see what you can get. Although I don't have any faith in them trading players, um, 
I, I know the Cowboys would not get value for what they have. Here's what we have going forward here. You have the Falcons, you have the Eagles, and you have the Texans. After that, you got the Commanders, you got the Giants, you got the Bengals, you got the Panthers, Tampa Bay, Eagles, and Washington. The good news on that is there's only one team that's on the AFC, which means that every game um, helps you as far as trying to win your division or to make hay in the NFC to be a wild card. You beat Washington twice, hey, things look a lot different. You beat the Eagles twice, things look a lot different. But it all starts with the the Falcons. This is, without a doubt, a must win. You win this one, you get to 500, you're 4-4, four and four, then that possibility makes the Cowboys think, okay, maybe, maybe we need to go ahead and make a trade. Maybe this season isn't as bad as we think. If you lose it, then you have to look at this and say, you're done. You're just done. I don't know where else to put it. I know I'm not a happy camper today. I know it's going to be terrible on the Dance Leo show, but it is what it is. I made my bed. I talked my shit. And now I've got a lie in it. Hope you guys have a great day. And, um, I'll see you when I see you. Peace out.